Good morning, everyone. Thank you very much for coming at early early hour. Nine. It is nine o'clock. It is very, very early, and for us who are coming from the north, it is even eight o'clock. You know, it's even earlier. Uh, I am glad to be a host today uh, on the specific theme, which is also was used yesterday. Uh, we are trying to e explore the war in Ukraine and the consequences uh, to economy, defense, and all aspects of human life, what we have uh, now. Our task is to see how it is affecting the uh, economy of Western Balkans. Uh, in this task, uh, uh, I will have a help of uh, distinguished guests this morning, and let me in introduce uh, them. First of all, Mr. Kresnik Bekteshi, Minister of Economy, Republic of North Macedonia. Welcome. Uh, Janis Smirlis, Secretary General for International Affairs, Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Welcome. Good morning. And uh, Goran Tinic, the World Bank Program Manager, Southern Eastern Europe. Welcome, Goran. And now you know who, who will be helping me in order to enlighten this uh, specific thing. Uh, uh, let's, let's start. Maybe, maybe just uh, some introductory what's going on, you know. Our, uh, after the World War II, we have a specific uh, uh, institution uh, created, like a Bretton Woods, uh, like a dollar as a reserve currency, the Security Council, the UN. It was all foundation of post-war. Now this post-war is shaking from from all from all sides. We have a lot of challenges before, but nothing happened uh, like it is happening uh, these days. Challenges was Korean War, Vietnam War, Cuban Missile Crisis, 1970s oil crisis, September 11th, financial crisis 2008, and finally health crisis 2020. But combination of unfinished COVID crisis and the war in Ukraine is bringing a completely new situation to, to our societies and to our economies. Uh, Initial closure of nationalist economy, what we have uh, during the COVID uh, uh, crisis, disruption of supply chain, closure of traffic, tourist trade channels, huge number of sick people and that people we have because of COVID have led to negative growth of the world economy. By printing money or quantitative easing, uh, we, we try to save the uh, uh, world economy but we only created inflation, which is uh, between 6 and 7%. It is the biggest in the last uh, 40 years. Uh, and what is happening right now, because of the further uh, disruption of supply chain uh, and, and uh, expenses, what we are having, um, it seems that we'll have stagflation. The situation, what is uh, Japan facing last 20 or 30 years? 30 years. What will happen on the world, what's happening on the world market? Oh, it will be a lack of gas and oil. It is, it will be a loss of market of Russia and Ukraine. And we already have this European inflation, which affects our economies very much because our economies are dependent on the EU. Uh, we are exporting or uh, uh, you are trading partner between 60 and 70 percent. And uh, every problem which EU is having, it reflects on our economy. Uh, 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 also, we can, what we can expect of EU accession. All our countries in Western Balkans are expecting to be a EU member one day. It seems that will be postponed or it will be accelerated. We will see what, what will be happening. According to EBRD, uh, uh, shrinking of Russian economy will be around 10%. Shrinking of uh, Ukrainian economy, uh, more than 20%. And even Belarusian economy will shrink uh, uh, around 3%. Also, slow down in the growth of country, uh, emerging countries like China, which was predicted 5%, Indonesia 5%, Turkey 2 South Africa 2%. It will be lower for 1%, which means 20 to 50% of their predicted growth will, will be lost. 
Also, Czech Republic, Slovak Republic, Bulgaria, Lithuania, Finland will have 5% less than they expected. Uh, the Ukrainian crisis uh, could make uh, harder for many uh, low and middle income countries like our countries are. High commodity prices, food and energy, trade shocks, financial turbulences, refugees, lost Russian-Ukrainian market will affect our economy. And Professor Stiglitz in 2008, regarding the uh, crisis of 2008, uh, uh, he mentioned that crisis will be very severe, very sharp for big economies. For small economies, I was expecting they will say that we will have smooth uh, transition. He said for, for smaller economy, it, is, it will be even harder. That is really uh, happening uh, uh, in, in, in our situation. Russia is fifth partner of EU. The trade with the EU is 257 billion. Their, uh, the, uh, of, uh, their GDP is 1.7 billion. Ukraine is 135 billion turnover. And for example, Germany imports 55% of gas from Russia, 34% oil. France, 70% gas and 13% oil. Uh, this just sh is showing a dependence of uh, each other economies. Uh, uh, Russian number one partner is EU. Uh, like all our, uh, in our region, all our part, uh, number one partner is EU. And we have to be very careful how we are dealing with the, with the situation. And uh, let's, let's, uh, 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 let's, after this introduction, ask my colleagues uh, what is their opinion on the, on the situation. Maybe we, we, we should start with Mr. Bekteshi. Uh, Minister of Economy of North Macedonia. We met last year in uh, Skopje Economic Forum, and we are discussing about uh, energy, high energy prices, and comparing with this situation, it was easy game. Now, now our game is doubled or, or, or tripled or much more complicated. Uh, my, my, my question is, uh, how, how do you see situation in in North Macedonia, you are uh, buying 119 million from Russia, and you are exporting 77 million. You are buying mostly petroleum and gas. How how you see how it will be affected by the situation when you are not trading anymore with Russia, or uh, maybe very soon it will be hard to to, to get gas and, and and oil. Right. First of all, I would like to thank you for the invitation and having the opportunity to discuss uh, regarding uh, this issue, which is uh, quite important, uh, not only for the economies of the countries, but uh, it is more important uh, for the standard living of the citizens, especially when discussing for uh, countries uh, uh, like uh, North Macedonia and uh, the others in the Western Balkan uh, region, having in mind that uh, at the moment uh, when this uh, war is happening, uh, we were doing our best in order to progress our integration to the European Union regarding the, the reforms. Uh, uh, as you already mentioned, uh, last year we were discussing regarding the energy crisis and we were expecting that uh, somewhere in March of this year uh, that uh, would be finished or it slow down so that afterwards uh, we can uh, take uh, several measures and uh, work parallel to that in the diversification of the uh, energy supplies, not only in North Macedonia, but in the region overall. But what happened with the invasion of Russia in uh, uh, Ukraine, I can say that it's an unprecedented blow to the overall humanity, considering the, the lives which are lost, but also uh, having in mind that we are in the first 21st uh, century, and this uh, to happen uh, in the European continent, uh, continent uh, no one uh, accepted, but uh, it's happening now, and uh, we have to to face uh, with this uh, issue. Uh, as North Macedonia, we have uh, uh, only 1% of the trading volume uh, with uh, Russia and somewhere around 1.3 to 1.4 with uh, Ukraine. And directly, it's not that big a huge impact when it comes to the trade exchange. But uh, in your introductory speech, uh, you gave uh, great data uh, 
which indirectly would have a huge impact in our economies because more than 75% uh, of our trade uh, exchange uh, is done uh, with uh, EU countries. So indirectly, we would have an uh, impact, uh, but also will have an impact regarding uh, the decrease of the competitiveness of our companies. Uh, we are uh, fully dependent of the natural gas, which is coming from uh, Russia through our uh, neighbor Republic of Bulgaria. And uh, our consumption yearly is around uh, 430 million uh, normal meter uh, cubics. Uh, and uh, more than 85% uh, of this uh, uh, volume uh, is used uh, for our cogeneration uh, capacity, which is in our capital city of uh, uh, Skopje. And uh, with the uh, ending of the heating season in the 15th of April, we'll have uh, an impact on the, and the, at the industry, which is around 50% of the overall uh, uh, consumption. Therefore, we are working very closely with our neighbors uh, to start uh, the new investments uh, uh, especially with the Republic of uh, Greece regarding the new interconnector, which will diversify uh, our supply, especially with natural gas, having in mind that at the moment uh, uh, we are supplied with oil uh, more than 95% from uh, uh, Greece and uh, around 5% from Burgas, which is uh, directly linked with the Russian company Lukail, which is operating in North uh, Macedonia as well. So uh, together with uh, my colleagues, uh, we have uh, worked uh, uh, very closely in order to design measures uh, which uh, would uh, decrease the negative impact when it comes to the standard of living of our uh, citizens. We have already adopted 26 uh, measures uh, which uh, are ongoing when it comes to the implementation uh, and uh, hopefully this uh, would finish uh, very soon so that uh, the disruptions on the supply chain, uh, chains, uh, especially regarding uh, the food, uh, the commodities uh, overall, uh, uh, having in mind that uh, around 35%, 40% uh, of those uh, commodities are coming from these two countries which are at war at the moment, uh, would uh, not uh, last uh, very long, uh, because uh, in that case, uh, we have uh, to work very closely in order to uh, progress with the ongoing projects regarding the, uh, the diversification. When it comes to the EU, I think that there is not an option in order or integration to be prolongated because of the fact uh, that uh, we already have a lesson, as mentioned already in the 21st century, what may happen when it comes to stability and security for countries which are at the heart of the European continent and uh, are not part of the EU, not because of the reforms, but because of bilateral issues. Therefore, we are expecting, and I would like uh, from here to share a message, that uh, this lesson has to be learned also from the European Commission in order uh, the North Macedonia and other Western Balkan countries uh, to start the negotiation process uh, as soon as possible because uh, our membership to NATO gives us security and stability, but prosperity will be given uh, with our progress and the start of the negotiations. Okay, thank you for timing. I hope also that uh, EU membership is uh, one of the solutions for a, for a problem what we are all <coughs> facing there. Okay, for Mr. Ioannis Smirnis, uh, uh, regarding uh, this uh, unprecedented situation what we have with the uh, invasion of Russia. There is a three components. One is diplomatic and political. Second is defense component of the problem. And third is economic problem. We are discussing economic problem. Uh, uh, Russia is exporting to Greece 2.6 billion uh, uh, dollars. And Greece is exporting uh, to 205 million uh, uh, dollars uh, towards uh, Russia. But uh, tourism is uh, important as well. In 2019, uh, you had 583,000 tourists which, who spent 433 million euros. In 2013, it was even more, in 1.2 million uh, tourists. You know. This is very, very uh, important uh, part of the, of the um, uh, Greek e economy. Uh, 
how you can see this new situation and uh, um, uh, your politician already uh, defined that, uh, through EU and through NATO uh, the, the position, how is you in the economic section, uh, how you are seeing, how you can replace uh, uh, the, the the gas tourism uh, and and tourists. Thank you very much. It's great to be here in this panel with great uh, also other guests. Uh, at first, I should say that uh, no, I totally agree uh, with uh, Mr. Minister that uh, it was unexpected in this century that we'll have a war uh, in Europe. Nobody could, uh, <laughs> could say last year that it was also in the Skopje Economic Forum and we were discussing at that time uh, what, what will, will happen in just in, a, in one year. And I must say that uh, an invasion in Europe, you see how it affects globally the economy. It's not a matter of uh, the region, of the Balkan region. It's not a matter of EU. It's, it's a global problem and you see that uh, energy is a global problem, uh, economy is a global problem. And of course, it's important as a region to be really close, it's important as a region to work together, it's important to have a common approach on the problems. And this is something, as you said before, that as Greece, the Prime Minister, Mr. Giacomo Tsotakis, said it from the beginning that it is important to have an EU approach on the problem of energy, on the prices. We had also a six bullets plan that the Prime Minister proposed to the European Commission and the summit of EU. But this means that we believe the same for the region. You know that uh, it doesn't matter how much we are affecting tourists because uh, we, tourists we can find for also from, from other countries in, in order to substitute uh, the Russians. But this is not a problem. The problem is the instability that brings the war uh, and that the, the people are not going to travel as they were supposed to travel because they don't feel safe. And this goes to all the fields of the economy. It's the same with trade. It's the same with investments. Why an investor to go invest now and not to wait to finish the war and to see where uh, things will go, which means that uh, the investors globally will hesitate to, to make the investment that we are planning for the next months. And this goes uh, to, to, to the rest of the economy because if you don't have investments, you don't have growth. If you don't have growth, you, how you can, uh, you can have uh, growth at, at the trade and uh, at the volume of the trade between, between the countries. Uh, the inflation uh, is uh, also a big problem that we'll have to face. So. If you see it in, in totally, uh, I must tell you that uh, as Greece is the uh, only uh, uh, member of EU of this part of the region, all member of EU of this part of the region, is uh, the biggest economy of the region. It is uh, also uh, a stable democratic country that supposed to, to affect the region in a good way in order to go to the integration and to have uh, all the Western Balkans in EU. It's clear from Greece that we want all the Western Balkans countries in the EU. The thing is that, and I agree also this with, uh, with the minister, that now we should uh, walk faster. Now we should find solutions in order to bring them inside, because even if we have an EU approach, the Balkan region will affect you. We are neighbors, we are one neighborhood, so we affect each other and we should live together. And when you are talking about energy, energy, uh, as uh, the minister said, we have the interconnector. This is one plan, but we need the whole region, the whole Europe, to find different routes, to find different ways, to find a stability on the energy sector that will bring stability on the economy. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Uh, let's see how the World Bank is seeing the situation. Uh, priorities of World Bank uh, were inclusive and green growth, digitalization, recovery from the COVID, all nice stuff, you know, especially this uh, green growth, you know, was a very popular theme. But now we have uh, uh, another big problem, which is a humanitarian catastrophe, what we have in, uh, in Ukraine, and uh, also effects which will come to, to our countries as well. I just mentioned uh, uh, how the uh, EBRD is seeing the situation in the in the region? Uh, do uh, World Bank has similar evaluation, and how uh, you 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 are seeing uh, what's happening to to our economies? Thank you very much, Top. It's a good morning, everybody. At the beginning, you and uh, you introduced this discussion, and you mentioned the word crisis a number of times. Yeah. And it, it, it is, is it, indeed. Is it, 
is it crisis? a perpetual crisis that the mankind is facing. Yeah. Um, similarly to Ioannis, I would argue that the problems facing uh, Western Balkans economies are inseparable yeah. from the destiny of other EU member states, from the immediate neighborhood, from Europe. So, I mean, in my, in the, in my thesis, I'll just say a few words about Please. what are the priorities in the EU member states, and also I will touch upon uh, the Western Balkans. So you're right. Uh, the narrative, as we were hoping that, that we are getting out of the tunnel of pandemic, was built back better. Going back to normal was not good enough. I mean, we can all agree upon that. And we were arguing that we should build societies that are more resilient, more inclusive. Uh, we were arguing that the source of growth should be green growth. Uh, but there is one aspect that I would like to underline that applies to Western Balkans, but also to many countries in Europe, in particular in Southern Europe. I'm currently working on the Southern Europe program which is institutions. If you look at the map of governance indicators, of the world governance indicators, it is the countries of the Western Balkans, but also Bulgaria, Romania, Greece, Italy, that are not faring well in, in terms of quality of institutions. So strengthening institutions, strengthening the systems, uh, building trust in institutions is, is a homework for all of us in the Western Balkans, but also uh, in many other uh, EU member states. So on, on top of all the priorities that, uh, that uh, you listed, um, I would add this institutional angle, which is very important. Yes, Ukraine crisis, war in Ukraine, is first and foremost a humanitarian crisis. So uh, in preparation for this session, I looked at the refugee numbers. So on March 7, UNHCR projected that if the trends continue, by July we will have 4 million refugees from Ukraine. This number was exceeded by the end of March. So already now we have over 4.1 million refugees from Ukraine, mainly coming to Poland, Romania, Moldova, but also reaching other EU member states including Greece. There are aspects that I would like to highlight in this humanitarian crisis that may maybe go be, uh, below radar. Health. These people, these 4.1 million and 6.5 who are internally displaced within Ukraine, we, I mean, we need to provide health care to these people. We need to protect, protect them because pandemic is still not over. And Ukraine had one of the lowest rates of vaccination in Europe. Only 37% of people in Ukraine received two doses of uh, COVID vaccines. So there is a huge health risk, and we need to protect the people. Education. About 40 to 50% of all these refugees are children. During the pandemic, they already lost two years of education. Yes, they were online courses. Yes, the technology helped immensely. But the data shows that during the pandemic, in terms of quality of education, kids have lost disproportionately more than during normal times. So we need to make up for this. And kids from Ukraine are facing challenge of losing one more year of education. It requires help and attention from all the host countries. So I would argue that we need to protect the most vulnerable. And the same narrative goes to the countries of the Western Balkans. So in the Western Balkans, there are three main channels that, that uh, we are importing the crisis from uh, the war in, in Ukraine. The first, and Topitsa mentioned it, is inflation. OK, so inflation is likely to double the numbers that we have seen in 2021 due to the increase in prices of food and energy. Uh, export to Russia, to Ukraine, and Belarus from Western Balkans is probably going to be severely affected. But not only to these countries, but also to traditional markets in the EU, because demand 
is expected to be reduced. So this is another shock. Value chains are already distorted. So if you talk to automotive, uh, automotive industry uh, in that sector, they're already facing severe problems. So there are other value chains that are very much affected. So there is a fourth channel that is very, very important in the Western Balkans, which is that this region in particular depends on remittances from abroad. So there is a huge diaspora from all countries in the Western Balkans, mainly in the EU, but also in the, in the US, Canada, etc., et but mainly in the EU. As the EU markets contract, as the EU economies contract, remittances are also expected to be severely affected. This may be another blow to the economies of the Western Balkans. So let me stop here. Uh, we have identified challenges, and in the next uh, round, I hope that we can uh, uh, okay. identify some uh, recipes to cure okay. these challenges. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Goran, for time being. Maybe just to remind uh, our auditorium uh, about the figures, uh, like Bosnia and Herzegovina is having $20 billion uh, GDP, and uh, export to Russia 189, and imports 70, uh, export 76, and uh, import from Russia 189. Uh, North Macedonia already mentioned, Albania is 15 billion economy, and uh, importing from Russia 129 and exporting only only 16. Uh, Serbia is very dependent. This is a problematical uh, part uh, that uh, uh, Serbia is uh, importing from Russia 1.2 billion and exporting almost 1 billion. Euro. Then we will be severely affected. Uh, Montenegro, which is and Serbia is uh, 55 billion uh, GDP. Montenegro is 5 billion and uh, importing from Russia 18 million and exporting 17.6 billion. <laughs> they are in balance, which is very, very, very strange. Uh, for Macedonia, I already mentioned, uh, uh, and uh, it seems that uh, our economy, economies are not big enough, uh, but uh, partly dependent on Russia, especially Serbia, uh, Serbian side, and also dependent on, uh, on and oil. As uh, Goran said, uh, completely, he's completely right, we will be affected uh, of uh, crisis in Europe, which will also uh, have, uh, is going to happen there. For Mr. Bekhteshi, uh, how, how your government is seeing, the, do, do you expect some help from some uh, in international institutions like uh, World Bank, IMF, to, to overcome this, uh, this crisis, uh, or EU. We are we just, all of the, the four of us, we are mentioning that maybe a faster accession to EU will, will, will help the, the process, maybe to send a message to the, uh, to the EU officials for the Western Balkans. We remember uh, Romania and Bulgaria, they, they went into the fast track, and yesterday, uh, somebody mentioned on one of the panels, can you imagine what will happen uh, to Bulgaria if they didn't join EU at the time? Probably it will be Gubernia of, of Russia uh, today. To Romania as well, <laughs> maybe. So uh, for sure, we are expecting in order the uh, integration of North Macedonia to be accelerated. Uh, for, then it will, has to happen uh, this uh, Year having in mind that we have the candidate status uh, for more than 15 years uh, now as North uh, Macedonia. When it comes uh, to the effects of uh, the war and the trade that uh, our neighbors has with uh, Russia, in the, this case uh, Serbia, it will affect North Macedonia as well because uh, we are quite uh, linked with the Serbian economy and we have a huge uh, trade volume with Serbia especially in the food sector, so that uh, any effects uh, of the uh, Russian uh, invasion in Ukraine to the Serbian uh, uh, economy would affect uh, to North Macedonia, but also to, to, to the region. Therefore, uh, we are um, closely uh, working together with our colleagues, uh, not only in Serbia, but uh, with others uh, in the Western Balkans, uh, 
in order to come up uh, with uh, similar policies to share the information regarding uh, the situation uh, to our economies. Uh, and I would like to use the opportunity that uh, we had we used to have uh, huge help from the World Bank in the pandemics, but now as well uh, with uh, the new uh, situation. And we have asked for a help uh, to the EU. And uh, we, unfortunately, we don't have a feedback yet. Uh, so uh, when we are discussing for help from the EU, knowing the capacity of our economies, I think that uh, EU uh, should uh, take uh, immediate decisions in order to help the Western Balkan uh, uh, countries uh, regarding uh, the financial support they can provide, uh, having in mind that most of our uh, economies uh, have already uh, adopted within uh, their budgets a deficit which uh, uh, can uh, be even higher. Uh, now, uh, having, uh, so that uh, we can uh, realize and implement all the measures uh, that uh, we have already undertaken. In order uh, to maintain uh, the standard uh, living of our citizens, uh, we have uh, already adopted these uh, measures uh, when it comes to the decrease of VAT, especially for the food uh, products. Uh, we have decreased the VAT also for electricity. Uh, we have uh, made uh, uh, the custom duties of 0% when it comes to the natural gas and uh, regarding the import of uh, electricity. We have uh, done our best in order to increase uh, the production uh, domestically of energy so that uh, we can uh, uh, have uh, lower prices of energy for the citizens, uh, taking into consideration the uh, standard of living of our citizens and the standard overall of our economy. As, uh, the same has been done from Serbia, from other countries, uh, from Albania and uh, uh, Kosovo. So uh, as North uh, Macedonia, uh, on February, we had an inflation of around 7%, which hopefully would not uh, increase uh, further. And uh, we are expecting uh, that uh, with the help of the World uh, Bank, uh, these uh, measures uh, would have a positive uh, impact when it comes to the management of the crisis, as it used to have uh, uh, when we adopted uh, nearly the similar measures uh, uh, during the time of pandemics, uh, when I'm talking for pandemics, the beginning of pandemics, because afterwards uh, we were parallelly uh, taking uh, other uh, measures uh, as well. So overall, for sure, there it would be uh, an impact of this uh, war in our uh, economies. Uh, but as already mentioned uh, by the other colleagues uh, previously, we have to be more inclusive, more transparent, and uh, to increase the cooperation, uh, not only uh, within the countries in the region, but overall with the, with the EU, and uh, the acceleration of the integration processes of the Western Balkan countries to the EU would give a huge positive impact to the citizens of our country because of the fact that based on all the polls, some of the citizens are losing uh, at the moment uh, the belief to the EU integration and uh, the increase uh, when it comes to the support of, of other countries which are not part of the EU is increasing in the past uh, uh, months, which unfortunately has to do uh, with uh, uh, the time uh, that uh, most uh, of our countries uh, have already passed uh, in order to get uh, that date, date uh, uh, regarding the negotiations. So overall, uh, North Macedonia is ex accepting that uh, this year we start the negotiations and more of that in order in the Western Balkans to respect all the agreements we have, like the SAFTA agreement and the others, in order to uh, have uh, stronger economies and an integrated regional market uh, in the Western Balkans. Thank you. Yeah. Everything you said have a sense. But also we have a, uh, Mr. Uh, Ioannis. Uh, uh, Greek has an important uh, role at the beginning of the century <coughs> Uh, patronizing in a positive way uh, uh, Western Balkans. 
trying to help uh, through different uh, EU funds, uh, for example, roads uh, uh, through, through Serbia towards Greece, uh, railroads as well, uh, talking a lot with uh, the local communities how to enhance business cooperation with Greece and also to, to bring them to EU. Uh, it seems from our discussion that one of the solutions for, for our problem with this uh, what's happening in Ukraine is, is a faster integration uh, of EU. Your ministry is in charge for these kind of things. You know. What do you think? Uh, uh, what is your opinion? And is there any uh, uh, discussion about this, how, how to, to push integration uh, of, of the region? You know? At first, I must say that uh, EU is a part of the solution. And you use part of the solution because uh, the members, you see that they feel safe, the, the citizens of the EU, that uh, they, they feel that it, they can be helped by the EU Commission, by the EU system, by uh, the, uh, the United Union that the, can, can work together and find common solutions. But of course, this doesn't mean that uh, in order to, to, to dance, you need two. So of course, we need to go faster with uh, the Balkan region and of course, Greece uh, uh, is, is behind uh, this drive for many years and we want uh, not to have a black hole uh, in this uh, part, of, uh, part of Europe. But we need also to be sure that uh, all the Western Balkans are going to be faster at the reforms, are going to follow the European path. Uh, for example, we can see it, uh, the, next, uh, the last years we can see that uh, uh, North Macedonia has uh, some progress, but you cannot say it for all the countries. There are countries that are not sure where they want to go. And you see what it can happen outside of EU. If Ukraine was in EU, maybe the, uh, now uh, Mr. Zelensky wouldn't uh, be somewhere hiding and trying to defend his country, but would discuss with Putin in order to find solutions. EU is a safety net for the whole region and a safety net for the whole Europe. But on the other hand, let's uh, face the truth. Uh, EU is not, it, it, it's, a, it's a unique uh, uh, union. It, it never happened before something like EU, to have nations with history, nations that were fighting together, and now to decide to give power to, uh, to their common future. So in order to be in there, because we've seen in the past by, by integration, by uh, putting a lot of, uh, uh, of, of new members inside just in, uh, in one with fast track procedures, that this can create also problems. And now I'm saying what is being discussed in the European Commission. In the European Commission, it's not only the voice of a Balkan country like Greece that understands how important it is to have not, uh, not to have a black hole in, in the region. And it's not only important for stability and security, it's important for trade, it's important for growth. It's important also, also for having a strong Europe because this is the region that is at the borders with the other continents. This is a, it's not in Portugal where you will maybe have a fight with who? With the sea and the sharks maybe, <laughs> with nothing else. But if you have a stable Balkan region, you will have a more stable Europe. And this is something that we should both understand. I think and I hope that uh, this crisis that we have, because it's another crisis after the, uh, the pandemic crisis that will affect us all, this crisis will be in our minds in the same way and will work all together and Greece is ready to play the vital role that we should play in the region, uh, uh, between EU and the region, as we do it all these years, but it's important to be all together and to work all together and to keep in mind that you should sacrifice some things in order to get in. It's not something that you will get because we have war. This never happens in EU, and it will never happen in EU. Let's face the truth. The truth is that compromises is EU. So as long as the, uh, as long as the uh, Balkan countries, our neighbors, they are ready to make sacrifices, to make compromises, then be sure that EU will be ready to put them in sign and to have a, a broader and larger union, which is uh, the best solution for all of us. Thank you. And finally, for Mr. Uh, Goran, uh, I saw that uh, uh, 
uh, IMF and World Bank well, uh, has a very quick response to the situation in Ukraine on 1st of March. They have a joint statement in Washington. Uh, uh, IMF uh, allocate 2.2 billion and World Bank uh, allocate 3 billion for refugees, for immediate help of Ukraine and uh, other purposes to cover the, 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 the problems, expenses. Uh, do we as a region can expect any funds uh, to be distributed to us? Because as we realize from discussion, we will have a, uh, uh, effects on our economy and uh, our uh, lives of our citizens here. Thank you. What we are seeing again is unprecedented effort to provide support for Ukraine, hoping that the war will not last long, that it yeah, will yeah. stop tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So one good thing about the World Bank Group is that uh, during the pandemic, we were already making projections and uh, plans to support post-COVID recovery. During the war in Ukraine, uh, ever since the aggression started, we are making plans to support post-conflict reconstruction and development. So let me just give you some numbers and then I will focus Please. on the Western Please. Balkans. Last year, unprecedented response to the COVID pandemic, the World Bank Group provided new financing in the amount of over $92 billion. $92 billion. Is it enough? A drop in an ocean of needs. Okay. Um, in the Western Balkans, the current program of the World Bank Group is around $4 billion. More than half of that is yet to be disbursed, used, implemented. Okay. I'm very, very glad that Mr. Uh, Minister Kreshnik uh, mentioned partnership with the World Bank. The, the one first thing that we would argue needs to be done is funds that are already approved needs to be implemented. So accelerate implementation of already approved resources. For EU member states, this means accelerate utilization of uh, EU funds. Now is the time really to make every effort to accelerate implementation of all already approved resources before we talk about the new resources. The World Bank Group has always had a soft spot for the Western Balkans, recognizing vulnerabilities of that region, and it will continue to do so. The focus in, the, in this year, when we are facing multiple challenges, challenges uh, from the post-COVID recovery, challenges that are new challenges coming from the Ukraine war are multiple, and the economies will need to adjust. Let me just give you a few examples of the adjustments that will be needed. Let's start from our host country, Greece. In Greece, we are working uh, with, uh, with relevant agencies and ministries on the logistics gateway strategy. Okay, very relevant at this moment in time. As the trucking logistics uh, chains from Russia and Ukraine are being halted. As ports on the Black Sea are not operating, not even near to their, to their full capacity. Uh, as railway from that part of the world is also blocked. So a lot of these logistics will now be coming through the ports in Greece. So the Greece ports will need to adjust to the new situation of an increasing load of goods coming, coming this way. In the Western Balkans, the governments have provided outstanding response in supporting firms and households. I'm afraid that you will have to do it again. Again, provide support to firms and households and there is a cost attached to it. So the, the fiscal implications of these government spending, I mean, there, we can attach numbers to it and eventually will have to be paid. So we also need to identify new sources of growth. At the same time, invest in energy, green energy. This, this, these days in Europe, we keep on talking about um, reducing dependence on gas and oil coming from Russia. We should reduce dependence on fossil fuels altogether. 
That should be the argument for the green growth. If we are serious about green growth, then we should be talking about reducing dependence on fossil fuels altogether. That is a challenge for all of us. And there is so much space for investment in, um, in green energy sources. Get, let me get back to firms and households. Any crisis hits the most vulnerable the most. Any crisis, the poorest people suffer the most. So what can we do? So governments have now limited resources as they already spend a lot in response to pandemic. And they will now again need to spend to protect the most vulnerable. So they are hit by food prices, they are hit by energy crisis. And again, the most vulnerable the most. So now is the time to utilize the social safety nets, social protection systems, to identify those who are most in the need and to provide them more assistance. I mean, so assistance to everybody, I don't think the governments will be able to afford it. Focusing on those who are most in the need is required. So transfers for energy, use the social protection systems to reach out the most vulnerable. So finally, uh, let me end by just referring, I'm, I'm also from the Western Balkans, and in the Western Balkans, we crave for normalcy. If you talk to average people on the street, they will, they will ask, will things ever get back to normal? Okay. And we should not encourage getting back to normal, because normal was not good enough. So it is not only that I will use this phrase of building back better, but we need to challenge ourselves, and in the bank we are doing that. And in, in cooperation with the governments throughout Western Balkans and EU member states, we are doing that. Really challenging ourselves to be more inclusive and primarily more resilient, to build res economies that will be more resilient. As these crises, multiple crises that Toplitza mentioned, also revealed vulnerabilities of these economies that we would need to address to build back better, more resilient, and more inclusive societies and economies. Let me stop here. Thank you very much. We are uh, on time, uh, finishing our uh, uh, session. I want just to, to thank the audience and to my uh, guest speakers. And Mr. Bekteshi has just one, issue. one word, please. When we are talking for the Western Balkans, in particular for North Macedonia, but also the others, let's look back why this war is happening. Because we are dealing with the past. The Russian side is stating some issues regarding the history or whatever for Ukraine, and it's done uh, uh, from the opposite uh, side. So in the 21st century, we have a war in the European continent, which is the most developed continent uh, uh, globally, I may easily say. The energy is a security issue as well, mm. a stability mm. issue as well. And uh, when we are talking for our integration, we want to look to the future all together and not go to the past and deal with history and issues that academia and the people which, has, which are competent would deal with that issue. Let's look forward to have a better standard of living for our citizens, to have a more developed uh, region, which is not a region which is outside of the EU. It's in the heart of the EU and not live as a black hole inside the EU and for the upcoming decades to have another scenario which is happening now in other part of the EU. Thank you for helping me in the conclusion. I think that is a good conclusion. Thank you very much to, to all of you. It is end of our session. I just want to congratulate. Thank you.